Hey everyone, this is Ed Keim, CEO over at Quantia, and welcome to week two of the Quantia Challenge. It's May 8th, 2015, around 1 p.m. Eastern Time, and let's dig into our portfolio. Uh, we opened the portfolio last week with two trades. We had a bearish call spread on Las Vegas Sands that's currently doing pretty well, a little bit of profit as that stock has edged downward slightly. And we're doing uh, not too bad on our long call position in Merit Medical, which was the bull of the day, uh, which has gone upward a little bit. Uh, you'll notice that we're working in, in all of our market trades and therefore we're kind of uh, losing a little bit of value out of the gate uh, when we open those positions but uh, the pricing we're using for the portfolio is just the last for the options just for the sake of uh, of dealing with day-to-day uh, -day comparison uh, generally you'll want to work with the bid and the ask but for the sake of simplicity we're just dealing with lasts now we didn't do any closing transactions this week um, which would be today uh, we didn't close anything which means we're holding on to the portfolio we have at least until next Friday uh, and overall, based on a last position of the options, which of course isn't the perfect way to measure it, but we are up a little bit in the account, which is nice. So let's dig into Zach's bull of the day, which is Cirrus Logic. It's recently trading at $36.75. Uh, they make high precision analog and digital signal processing components. So their big customers are Apple and Samsung and those guys. A uh, lot of opportunity for them, and they are really doing a great job. Uh, their earnings revisions have just been moving upward for 2016 and for fiscal 2017. Uh, it, it just shown nice progress, and uh, Piper Jaffray recently updated the price target that they have for them to $44 a share from 38 which is a healthy boost over the current $36.75 they're trading at. So let's step over to Quantia now to find a great options trade to trade that bullish sentiment on Cirrus. I'm going to start off by entering the symbol and clicking search expiration, and now we can see the uh, the implied volatility map over the, the next few durations out to about six months. And uh, we'll probably look, uh, we'll probably look about, uh, let's say we'll start at three weeks out. And we'll get an idea for where the forward price is for the stock at this time. Um, since we're bullish on the stock, we expect the forward price to be a little bit higher uh, if the sentiment from the market kind of matches that. Uh, one of the things you'll notice here is that the, the put break even uh, is significantly lower than where the call break even is high. Uh, that means that the, for the open interest that's being held right now, that the, the amount of money to break even if you buy puts is significantly lower. And so uh, that's kind of an interesting indicator that uh, we may expect to see some of these put spreads come in uh, as better trades than the call spreads. But if we move up to June, we'll get a feel for kind of the forward price being about in the same place and a similar sentiment with the, the, the movement around for the stock price, or rather for the put break even versus the call break even. Um, let's stay with those May 29th, so that those numbers were looking a little bit better here. And so we'll go with a moderately bullish forecast, um, which is at this point about break even to about, you know, a 7.5% gain, uh, which is pretty significant still. But if we go ahead and apply that, we'll keep our budget at $1,000 and have, have Trader plugged in as our broker here. And we can see uh, we've got a bunch of trades. Now, this has already been set from from a previous session. So you can see that we've already got the minimum return to filter out anything that's below a zero return. And we've also decided to exclude range bound strategies. Um, given the, the nature of our strategy, we could go in with something like an iron condor here. But the problem is if the stock moves up too much, we are looking at, uh, at losing in this time frame if it does cross that mark. And so we're really not going to not going to try to put a gauge on how bullish we should be. So we'll just say excluding those range bound strategies is the way to go. And we can pick kind of, there's a few good trades here. Uh, you know, if these top three are a great example, um, the best average is this, uh, this bull put spread, which is to buy the 35s and sell the 37 and a half. Uh, if you want a better potential, meaning a higher bar up here, uh, you'd be looking at uh, the slightly different adjustment of the strikes and of course, if you wanted a better minimum return, so lower risk on that trade for the for the period we're looking at, uh, you'd go with this particular trade here. You notice they're all uh, credit trades because we're having a it's a bull put spread, so it's a bullish trade using puts. And um, we can really pick any of these. I'm going to go ahead and probably go with the one with the best potential here, just to see if we can't uh, get some nice results out of it. And uh, we get a quick trade review. I mean, certain things like we're aware that the earnings is after the expiration, uh, which is nice. Uh, liquidity could be an issue here. Um, a lot of the options for this stock aren't very liquid, uh, but they're, you know, the liquidity is mostly about the bid ask spread. So if, if we're planning on holding this to expiration, it's really only going to hurt a little bit on the way in and on the way out. We should hopefully be able to get to expiration if we can. Um, we're looking at a price model that is unlikely because it's less than 50%, but it is also a bullish directional trade. So we sort of expect 
to have that be less than 50% because we're expecting the stock to go up. The good news here is that the trade does appear to be profitable. So if we come down and we take a look at the full implied range, we can see we're dealing with a profit probability, meaning that uh, more than half of the probabilistic uh, ending for these uh, for these price values would be a profitable trade for us. So that's a good sign. And, uh, you know, the average probable return is negative, but that's also considering that, you know, the stock could go down. And we're going to we're taking the bullish position, so there is a little bit of risk involved there. So we'll we'll go ahead and move forward with this trade. I think the return is pretty solid for the time frame we're looking at. So it's about a three week time horizon. If we can return 60% or 65%, that'd be great. So I'll click place trade and get over to our the dashboard on the Tradier brokerage site. I'm going to select market as a, we're restricted to here and, and make it a day order. We'll preview it just to get a, a feel to see that it, it is what we're looking for and uh, our, our total liability here is about $887, which is within that $1,000 limit that we put in the in Quantra. And so we'll go ahead and we'll just submit that as a market order and give it a couple seconds here to see if it can uh, fill out for us as quickly as possible. And there we go. We're filled at 141. So uh, we are now in that position and uh, we'll, we'll take a look at Cirrus over the next uh, couple weeks to see if that, that bullish plays out for us. And Zach's bear of the day for today is TD Ameritrade. They were recently trading at $36.49 a share. And TD, of course, is the broker that everyone's familiar with already. Uh, their most recent earnings report showed lower revenues and higher expenses, which is why Zach's has kind of moved them downward on that Zach's rank. And uh, in 2015, the profit projections have dropped from $1.58 a share down to $1.50 a share. And that's produced a, a wave of negative earnings revisions and analyst expectations. So let's pick up where we left off in Quantia and see if we can find the right uh, bearish trade for TD Ameritrade. Come in and just plug in the symbol up here in the search box and we'll search for it. This will bring us to the, the overview. Uh, one thing you'll notice here is that the stock's currently trading at 36.45, which is pretty close to the 52-week uh, high. So that means that if there is bear sentiment, that it shouldn't really go much higher. I mean, we should see a little bit of a, a slide downward, which would be uh, favorable if we take that bearish position. From an expiration side, you'll see we don't have a ton of options to work with here um, because it's only we've got less than two months before the end of the campaign. So we really want to stick with these eight days or six week trades. So let's take a quick look at, at both of them. I think we have a, a minute here to, to get a view. So we'll start off by taking the range for this for this eight day expiration and we'll say that we want to look at a moderately bearish forecast here. So we've got this model where stocks either break even or moves downward over the next uh, over the next week. We'll move our budget down to $500 to be a little less speculative here. Um, we are kind of taking a flyer on this trade. Um, the volatility is not too high and the uh, forward price looks look a little bit of growth from where the stock is right now and the put and the call break evens are, are, are not too aggressive so we're really not it looks like there's not a lot of movement really expected in the stock uh, based on the pricing and so we'll apply that that view and we can see there's only one stock that kind of shows or one trade that shows up in this range for what we're looking for here which is this bear put spread uh, the other thing we can go is let's take a look out in the um, in the June time frame for that that trade that's a little further out and in this case, we'll also take a, a bearish, we'll take a bearish position and see what we got here. Uh, you can see we've got a lot more more trades here actually, which is kind of nice. Uh, in this case, we got this bear call spread that has uh, some some good opportunity here. Uh, and this one is is actually good because the minimum you can see the return here is that 19. 19% for the forecast view that we're looking at here. So what that actually tells us, if we look at the trade, the break even is going to be a little bit higher um, than what, we're, what we've got. So if we come up to the full implied range, we could see that the break even for the trade is 37 or 36.73, which is a little bit higher than the, the view we have. And also it's even higher than the forward price, which is kind of nice because that's an indicator that the market is expecting the stock to go about to, to this point. That's sort of the, the break even point that the the bulls and the bears have sort of found. So this looks like a pretty uh, a pretty nice trade from that perspective. You can see there's a good likelihood of profitability based on where the, the stock is expected to land. And although the probable return is negative, it's negative once you get beyond this forward price that we're looking at above. So this seems like a pretty solid bearish trade for us to move into. Um, let's go ahead and maybe even, uh, we'll maybe even bump this up a little bit. Uh, we'll, we'll go in for, let's say we'll bring that up to a thousand for this particular trade so we can get an idea 
uh, the numbers might shift a little bit in our favor. And we'll go ahead and uh, we'll place this trade. So we'll head out to our account at Trader Brokerage. Select market and day for the trade. We'll preview real quick to make sure that we know what we're getting into. Total cost 882 seems seems pretty good. Uh, we'll do the best we can here and we'll submit and we'll get that trade on the books and we'll give it a second to fill. And there we go. And we are set for the, the trades for this week. And so there you have it. Uh, this is our closing portfolio as of the end of day today. Um, we've got uh, four different positions that we're in right now. And so we're taking a look at two bulls and two bears. Uh, we've got a variety of expirations coming over the next few weeks. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, and in the meantime, please uh, let us know if you've got any questions or feedback. Either drop us a mail at hello at or post a comment down below in the comment section. Thanks and happy trading.